Hi everyone, it's Dana again with Piedmont Park Conservancy, back for another story time, except with a twist. Today we are reading for the very first time a chapter book. So we're going to start with The Magic Tree House, number one, Dinosaurs Before Dark by Mary Pope Osborne. Let's jump right in, shall we? Chapter one, Into the Woods. Help, a monster, said Annie. Yeah, sure, said Jack. A real monster in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania. Run, Jack, said Annie. She ran up the road. Oh, brother, thought Jack. This is what he got for spending time with his seven-year-old sister. Annie loved pretend stuff, but Jack was eight and a half. He liked real things. Watch out, Jack, the monster's coming, said Annie. Jack didn't say anything. Come on, Jack, I'll race you, said Annie. No thanks, said Jack. Annie raced alone into the woods. Jack looked at the sky. The sun was about to set. Come on, Annie, it's time to go home, yelled Jack. But Annie didn't answer. Jack waited. Annie, he called again. Jack, Jack, Annie shouted. Come here, quick. Jack groaned. This better be good, he said. Jack left the road and headed into the woods. The trees were lit with a golden late afternoon light. Over here, called Annie. Annie was standing under a tall oak tree. Look, she said. She pointed at the rope ladder. It was hanging down from high in a tree. Wow, whispered Jack. At the top of the tree was a tree house tucked between two branches. This must be the highest tree house in the world, said Annie. Who built it, asked Jack. I've never seen it before. I don't know, but I'm going up, said Annie. No, we don't know who it belongs to, said Jack. Just for a teeny minute, said Annie. She started up the ladder. Annie, come back, said Jack, but Annie kept climbing. She climbed all the way up to the tallest branches. Jack sighed. Annie, it's almost dark. We have to go home. Annie disappeared inside the treehouse. Annie, Jack called. Jack waited a moment. He was about to call again when Annie poked her head out of the treehouse window. Books, Annie shouted. What, Jack said. It's filled with books, said Annie. Oh man, Jack thought. He loved books. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He gripped the sides of the rope ladder and started up. Chapter two, the monster. Jack crawled into the treehouse. Wow, he said. The treehouse was filled with books. Books were everywhere. Very old books with dusty covers and new books with shiny bright covers. Look, said Annie, you can see far away. She was peering out the treehouse window. Jack looked out the window with her. Below were the tops of the other trees. In the distance, he could see the Frog Creek Library and the elementary school and the park. Annie pointed in the other direction. There's our house, she said. Annie was right. Jack could see their white wooden house with its green porch. In the yard next door was their neighbor's black dog, Henry. He looked very tiny. Hi, Henry, shouted Annie. Shush, we're not supposed to be up here, said Jack. Jack glanced around the treehouse again. He noticed that bookmarks were sticking out of many of the books. I wonder who owns all these books, he said. I like this one, said Annie. She picked up a book with a castle on the cover. Here's a book about Pennsylvania, said Jack. He turned to the page with a bookmark. Hey, here's a picture of Frog Creek, said Jack. It's a picture of these woods. Oh, here's a book for you, said Annie. She held up a book about dinosaurs. A blue silk bookmark was sticking out of it. Let me see, said Jack. He set his backpack down on the floor and grabbed the book from Annie. Okay, you look at that one and I'll look at the one about castles, said Annie. No, we'd better not, said Jack. We don't know who these books belong to. But even as he said this, Jack was opening the dinosaur book to the place where the bookmark was. He couldn't help himself. Jack turned to a picture of an ancient flying reptile. He recognized it as a pteranodon. He touched the huge bat-like wings in the picture. Wow, whispered Jack. I wish we could go to the time of the pteranodons. Jack studied the picture of an odd-looking creature soaring through the sky. Ah, screamed Annie. What, said Jack. 
A monster, Annie cried. She pointed out the treehouse window. Stop pretending, Annie, said Jack. No, really, said Annie. Jack looked out the window. A giant creature was gliding above the treetops. It had a long, weird crest on the back of its head, a shiny beak, skinny beak, and a huge bat-like wings. It was a real live pteranodon. The creature swooped through the sky. It looked like a glider plane. It was coming straight toward the tree house. Get down, cried Annie. Jack and Annie crouched on the floor. The wind started to blow. The tree house started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter three, where is here? Jack opened his eyes. Sunlight slanted through the window. The tree house was still high up in a tree, but it wasn't the same tree. Where are we, said Annie. She and Jack looked out the window. The pteranodon was soaring through the sky. The ground was covered with ferns and tall grass. There was a winding stream, a sloping hill, and volcanoes in the distance. I, I don't know where we are, said Jack. The pteranodon glided down to the base of the tree. It landed on the ground and stood very still. So what just happened to us, said Annie. Well, said Jack, I was looking at the picture in the book and you said, wow, I wish we could go to the time of the pteranodons, said Annie. Yeah, and then we saw a pteranodon in the Frog Creek woods, said Jack. Yeah, and then the wind got loud and the treehouse started spinning, said Annie. And we landed here said Jack. And we landed here, said Annie. So that means, said Jack. So that means what, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. He shook his head. None of this can be real. Annie looked out the window again. But he's real. He's very real. Jack looked out the window with her again. The pteranodon was standing at the base of the tree like a guard. His giant wings were spread out on either side of him. Hi, Annie shouted. Shh, said Jack. We're not supposed to be here. But where is here, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Hi, who are you, Annie called to the pteranodon. The creature just looked up at her. Are you nuts? He can't talk, said Jack. But maybe the book can tell us. Jack looked down at the book. He read the words under the picture. This flying reptile lived in the Cretaceous period. It vanished 65 million years ago with the dinosaurs. That's impossible, said Jack. We can't have gone to a time 65 million years ago. Jack, said Annie, he's nice. Nice, said Jack. Yeah, I can tell, said Annie. Let's go down to him. Go down, said Jack. Annie started down the rope ladder. Hey, come back, said Jack, but Annie kept going. Annie, wait, Jack called. Annie dropped down to the ground. She stepped boldly up to the ancient creature. Chapter four, Henry. Jack gasped as Annie reached out her hand toward the pteranodon. Oh no, he thought. Annie was always trying to make friends with animals, but this was going too far. Don't get too close to him, Annie, Jack shouted. Annie touched the pteranodon's crest. She stroked his neck, she was talking to him. What in the world is she saying? Jack wondered. He took a deep breath. Okay, he would go down too. It would be good to examine a pteranodon. He could take notes like a scientist. Jack started down the rope ladder. When he reached the ground, he was only a few feet away from the creature. The pteranodon stared at Jack. His eyes were bright and alert. He's soft, Jack, said Annie. He feels like Henry. Jack snorted. He's no dog, Annie. Feel him, Jack, said Annie. Jack didn't move. Don't think, Jack, just do it, Annie said. Jack stepped forward. He reached out very cautiously. He brushed his hand down the creature's neck. Interesting, Jack thought. A thin layer of fuzz covered the pteranodon's skin. Soft, huh, said Annie. Jack reached into his backpack and pulled out a pencil and a notebook. He wrote, fuzzy skin. What are you doing, said Annie. Taking notes, said Jack. 
we're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live pteranodon. Jack looked at the pteranodon again. The bony crest on the top of his head was longer than Jack's arm. I wonder how smart he is, Jack said. Very smart, said Annie. Don't count on it, said Jack. His brain's probably no bigger than a bean. No, he's very smart. I can feel it, said Annie. I'm going to call him Henry. Jack wrote in his notebook. Small brain? Jack looked at the creature again. Maybe he's a mutant, he said. The pteranodon tilted his head. Annie laughed. He's not a mutant, Jack. Well, what's he doing here then? Where is this place, said Jack. Annie leaned close to the pteranodon. Do you know where we are, Henry? She asked softly. The creature fixed his eyes on Annie. His long jaws were opening and closing like a giant pair of scissors. Are you trying to talk to me, Henry? asked Annie. Forget it, Annie, Jack wrote in his notebook. Mouth like scissors. Did we come to a time long ago, Henry? asked Annie. Is this a place from long ago? Suddenly Annie gasped. Jack! Jack looked up. Annie was pointing toward the hill. On top stood a huge dinosaur. Chapter five. Gold in the grass. Go, go, said Jack. He threw his notebook in his pack. He pushed Annie toward the rope ladder. Bye, Henry, she said. Go, said Jack. He gave Annie another push. Quit it, she said. But she started up the rope ladder. Jack scrambled after her. Jack and Annie tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. It was standing on the hilltop, eating flowers off a tree. Oh, man, whispered Jack, we are in a time long ago. The dinosaur looked like a huge rhinoceros with three horns instead of one. It had two long horns above its eyes and another one grew out from its nose. It had a big shield-like thing behind its head. Triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people, whispered Annie. I'll look it up. Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, Jack said pointing to a picture of a Triceratops. He read the caption. The Triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Good, said Annie. Let's go see him up close. Are you crazy, said Jack. Don't you want to take notes about him, asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live Triceratops. Jack sighed. Annie was right. Okay, let's go, he said. Jack shoved the dinosaur book into his pack. He slung his pack over his shoulder. Annie started down the ladder, and Jack followed her. Just promise you won't pet him, Jack called down to Annie. I promise, said Annie. Promise you won't kiss him, said Jack. I promise, said Annie. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise, said Annie. Promise you won't, don't worry, said Annie. Annie and Jack stepped off the ladder. The pteranodon gave them a friendly look. Annie blew him a kiss. Be back soon, Henry, she called. Shh, said Jack. And he led the way slowly and carefully through the ferns. When Jack and Annie reached the bottom of the hill, they knelt behind a bush. Annie started to speak, but Jack quickly put his finger to his lips. Then he and Annie peeked out at the Triceratops. The dinosaur was bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a magnolia tree. Jack slipped his notebook out of his pack. He wrote, eats flowers. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the Triceratops again. He wrote, eat slowly. Annie nudged him harder. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself, walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Is she teasing, Jack wondered. Annie waved at Jack. He started to grab her. He laughed, she laughed, and jumped away. She fell into the grass in full view of the Triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late. The big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He gazed down at her from the hilltop. Half of the magnolia flower was sticking out of his mouth. 
Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack said again. He looks nice, Annie said. Nice? Watch out for his horns, Annie, said Jack. The triceratops gazed calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and loped down the side of the hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See? Jack grunted, but he wrote in his notebook. Nice. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. Jack reached down and picked it up. It was a gold medallion. A letter was engraved on the medallion, a fancy M. Oh man, someone was here before us, Jack said softly. And that's where we'll pause, but just for now. Tune in next reading to see how the story finishes and if Jack and Annie ever find out who was in this place before them and where are they. We'll see you next time.